Vamos a empezar con Pedro Shashan. Pedro Shashan. This goes this way, I sing and you repeat after me. And the only thing that I am saying is that Rosh Hashanah, in Rosh Hashanah, Ish Lareu, a person to another person, Ikrave Simcha will call him with happiness, la 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 la, Pleshana Tova. Simple, clear, and nice. So, you repeat after me. Berosh Ashana, Berosh Ashana, Ishle Reu, Ikra Besimcha, Ikra Besimcha. Now this part is very difficult. Yai la 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 la. Yai la 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 
lai 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 la 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 Shana Tova Shana Tova Now in like Ashkenazi Yiddish Barosh Oshono Barosh Oshono Yidel Einen zu der Zweiter Yedel Einen zu der Zweiter Wegsogen mit Glicklach Wegsogen mit Glicklach Oi, 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 oi Oi, 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 oi all right uh I almost said Shabbat Shalom it's not it's the Shanaha Ba'a. have a good new year when I was a kid, uh, I think this was seventh grade in Hebrew day school, the rabbi made us memorize the Shana, the Shana Tova Tikatevu Vatechatemu. Everyone should be written and inscribed for a new year. And I was determined to show the old guys in the shul, the old guys were at least 40 or 50, that I was able to keep up with them. So after the service, I went over to the most venerable, oldest guy I knew, Mr. Hurwitz. Mr. Hurwitz was so old and so religious that only he and the rabbis would wear the kittel. Nobody else wore the kittel. This was in the 1960s. And I started to stumble out the Shana Tova Tiga, and, and he just said, which means you should have a good writing, a good inscription, and a good sealing. It doesn't mean that sealing. It means you should be sealed in the book of life. So I, I thanked him because he had really saved me about four or five words. And since that time, I, I try to say, or since I had to learn the uh, modernized Hebrew, unlike the stuff a lot of us learned in Hebrew day school, so I wish you all a good writing and being inscribed in the book of life and health, and uh, thank God we dodged a bullet, I hope, I hope, in terms of windstorms, I will say Amen. Amen. That's it. Yeah. Do the tangles? Anything you want? Yes, lighting the candles. Mrs. Abel, would you honor us by lighting the candles? Vidyantiv, thank you for coming. Yes. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kideshanu bemitzvotav vetzivanu leadlikner shel yom tov. Okay, Baruchu. We start directly with the Baruchu on page number 20. 
We invite everybody, please, to rise. Please rise, page 20. seated we'll read together the english paragraph on page 21 at the bottom with constancy with constancy you have loved your people israel teaching us torah and mitzvot statutes and laws therefore lord our god when we lie down to sleep and when we rise we shall think of your laws and speak of them rejoicing in your torah and mitzvot always for they are our life and the length of our days we will meditate on them day and night. Never take away your love from us. Praise to you, Lord, who loves his people Israel. Baruch atah Yisrael. Amen. And on page 22 is the Shema. We cover our eyes to show God cannot be seen. Shema Yisrael. Adonai. Let's read the English paragraph, please love the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall you take to heart. You shall diligently teach them to your children. You shall repeat them at home and away, morning and night. You shall bind them as a sign upon your hand. They shall be a reminder above your eyes. You shall inscribe them upon the doorposts of your homes and upon your gates. Let's read silently to the end of the second paragraph on page 24. Adonai, Eloyechen Memem, Vemula Korzo, the Gayaman. Bottom of twenty four. Yum Dorot Fimish, and I hear my word. וראו בניו גבולתו ושמחו ועודו לשמו. We are on page 26. ומלכותו ברצון גבלו ליהם משה עוברי ישראל לך אני הושירה ושמחה Malchut Karabanecha, Mokea Yablim Nehim Moshe, Seni Anove Amro, Anona Yimlo, Leola Vayed, Venema 
This is the prayer for Rafua Shalema, asking God for a quick and complete and speedy healing for those who are not well. We are thinking of the victims of Fiona up there in Canada. We are thinking about all the natural disasters that we've gone through over the past number of months. And we're praying for safety for our Florida neighbors as Ian makes landfall. I, I have to say, when we first moved to Florida 13 years ago, I was very surprised that people talk about hurricanes like their relatives. They would say, oh, we were here for Andrew. Oh, were you here for Charlie? And I, I found actually in my experience that a, a relative comes and he sits on your couch. When Andrew or Charlie comes, he takes your couch. So that's kind of a significant difference. But anyway, we are praying to God for protection. Let's read together at the bottom of page 27. And if there is someone you know in need of Rafur Shalema, you can call out their name or we'll just you'll just think about it while we're reading the paragraph. Anyone? Okay, I'm thinking about Jody Sebso, Rafua Shalema, and my brother-in-law, Richard Levy, uh, Rafua Shalema. Yes, Johnny. Rafua Shlema, yes. Rafua Shlema, yes. Yes. Rafua Shlema. Yes, sir. Rafua Shlema. Okay. Yes. Rafua Shlema. Thank you. Okay. Let's read the paragraph at the bottom of 27. Help us, our Father, to lie down in peace and awaken us to life again, our King. Spread over us your shelter of peace. Guide us with your good counsel. Save us for the sake of your mercy. Shield us from enemies and pestilence, from starvation, sword, and sorrow. Remove the evil forces that surround us. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings. You, O oh God, guard us and deliver us. You are a gracious and merciful King. Guard our coming and our going. Grant us life and peace now and always. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Praise to you, Lord, who spreads a shelter of peace over us, over all his people, Israel, over and over Jerusalem and the entire world. <speaking in Hebrew> Be all Yerushalayim, 
Yal kol haolam kulo. Amen. And please let's read together the second paragraph on 29. Sound the shofar together. Sound the shofar on the new moon, announcing our solemn festival. It is Israel's eternal ritual. The God of Jacob calls us to judgment. Please rise, bottom of twenty-eight. <laughs> Pages, this begins on 30 and it concludes on 39. Instead of charging through it, you might choose one paragraph and repeat it over and over to yourself. And after 39, you may be seated. <laughs> Sefatai <laughs> Yala la 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 ufi yagil ufi yagil tegila tegha Yala la 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 adora Yala la 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 sefata tifta Yala la 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 la
Ja. Shalom Rav al Israel Amcha Tassim Leola Shalom Rav al Israel Amcha
flag, we have the Kiddush on page 46. Please rise. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Mone Pri Yangafel. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Baru Mikoholam, Romemanu mi con la shore, me quede shano en mi tzvota. Mati, te la nueva dona y el oino vea. El tío más y calona se ve, y un truá, mi cracodesh, se jalicia ad mitzraim. Kimbanu, bajarta, biotanu. Kidashta mikol amim, kibanu bacharta v'otanu kidashta mikol amim, kibanu bachar with me v'otanu kidashta mikol amim, kibanu. Bacharta viotanu kidashta mikol amim udevar chaimet vekayar hamlaha maruchata adonai melech al kol haaretz mekadesh a mekadesh Israel vediyo masikarun. Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shecheyanu Vekimanu Veigiyanu Nazman Azeh Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shecheyanu vekimanu veigiyanu Nazman azeh Always good to repeat a good prayer, and this is the one at the bottom of uh, 46. And considering the situations we have gone through and putting an optimistic turn upon it, let's do that prayer together, please. The Sheikh Yanu, you could never do it too many times in life. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Sheikh Yanu Vikimanu Vihigianu Lazman Hazeh. Amen. Reading together the translation at the very bottom of 47. Praise you, Lord our God, King of the universe, for granting us life, for sustaining us, and for helping us reach this day. Amen. All right, please be seated. It's sermon time. Over the years, I've asked the question several times, why is it that Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur are the most popular of Jewish holidays for temple attendance? If you come on Purim, they give you a grogger and a humantashen. If you come on Simchat Torah, they give you a Torah and you can dance with it. If you come on Pesach, which many folks do, you have a Seder. And um, nobody's ever really given me a satisfactory answer, except one gentleman who happened to be a Jew by choice years ago. It was in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. He said, Rabbi, we all like the idea of new beginnings. But here I want to borrow a page from, shall we say, the Roman book. If you recall, Janus was the god of beginnings. 
He is always depicted in profile, one face looking this way to the future, the other face looking this way to the past. And I suggest that we Jews do the same. Among the civilized people on this earth, we are not the oldest. I think that the, not the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Hindus may have us beaten by a few hundred years, but the Jews come in, I would say, second. And we are, after all, the first monotheists. Uh, monotheism is too weighty a subject for me to deal with here, but I just like to think about it from time to time, the idea that everything proceeds from God. Well, what season do we find ourselves in? First, I want to thank you for coming to services today and hopefully tomorrow. When, we, when I started my first pulpit in North Carolina, uh, it was a very strongly populated service that first night of Rosh Hashanah. And first I thought it was my all American good looks and wonderful speaking style, but a kindly elder of the congregation said, well, you see Rabbi, our wives throw us out so that they can finish the chicken soup. So uh, we had no other place to go. So we figured we'd come to shul. Well, that's a compliment, you never know. But we know the high holiday, holidays, holy days are a season of renewal and joy repentance and memory. We come together. I, I hope you do make some friends here in the congregation. Uh, it's a perfectly safe and friendly environment. We do consider ourselves possibly the friendliest synagogue in uh, South Florida or perhaps the world. Uh, the idea of remembering Zechronot is a very important theme. We'll see that tomorrow in the prayer book. And it reminds us that this holiday season is not our first. If you could please remember when you were very young, the first time that you went, if you were a Jew by choice, then perhaps thinking about the warmth of the people whom you met. It's not always easy. The fact is that you can measure, it's not now, now seats are assigned, but under general circumstances, the, farther, the closer people get to the ark, that's where you find the devoted folks in the back, and this represents my very last visit to an Orthodox shul. It was the young Israel of Canarsie. And my mother said, please, David, go to the young Israel of Canarsie. Maybe it will rekindle in you the uh, nascent flames of orthodoxy because I grew up Orthodox. And I sat in the back and that was a big mistake because after 15 minutes in that service, I could tell you more about how the Yankees and the Mets were doing than about the state of God among the Jewish people. So I, I regret to tell you I got up and left. Anyway, uh, what, what is your first memory of Rosh Hashanah? I wish we could share, but it's really not the right forum for it. I remember in particular that for some reason, the Hebrew school teacher, I don't think it was a rabbi yet, the Hebrew school teacher gathered us in the, the sanctuary of the shul and had us all stand over a pair of candles one at a time holding a candle. The candle luckily was not burning because I think I was in the second grade. You don't want to trust a second grader with a lit match or a burning candle. I also remember I was wearing my favorite sweater, which was bright red. And there I am to this day, a chubby little Jewish boy wearing an oversized yarmulke and trying to light a candle from a, uh, a candle that isn't burning. Uh, my parents took that photograph. Do you remember when they used to do this and they had it mounted in a plastic frame sort of thing? You could look through the lens at the front and see yourself magnified. They used to give those out in the Catskills. I, I'm very proud of that. That was my first photographic moment. Otherwise, uh, I of course remember apples and honey. Anybody, any hands for apples and honey? Yes, wonderful. It's the only time you can, because you're eating fruit, right? That's the whole point. Uh, what else was, and teglach. Does anybody remember the teglach? The teglach is a mountain of cake balls, which are glued together by a very strong uh, combination of, of sugar and honey, because only Jews know how to take honey and make it more fattening. But it's fun because you could sit there with your knife and dig away at the thing. And if you don't lose a finger, it can be a wonderful experience. Very hard to find teglach anymore. So this is it. This is what we have. They say Jewish people don't have history. We have memory. There's the story of the two Jews who are walking towards each other in Jerusalem. Not unusual. One of them is a chassid. 
and the other one thinks from three blocks away that he knows him. So he begins waving and yelling. You could do that in Jerusalem. It's really, it's really permissible. And then he gets to the chassid and he sees it's the wrong chassid. Isn't that how it is in life? It's the wrong chassid. Anyway, he, he says, oh, I'm so sorry. He says, I, I don't know you. And the other one smiles and says, yes, you do. And he says, well, where did we meet? He said, at Sinai. That's the most wonderful legend I think you'll find. The idea that all of us Jews were together at Mount Sinai. The Jews who were born Jewish, the Jews who were Jews by choice, and God spoke to us in a single voice, and we all heard. That voice still echoes today, and that's why we have this holiday, because of the idea of remembering. We can remember all different kinds of things. Do you remember what you had for lunch? Nobody remember what two people remember what they had for lunch. Three people. Thank you so much. I had a bagel. And you know what? I had just about given up on the possibility of finding a decent bagel here in South Florida. But this one was pretty good. We tried to tear it apart and it refused. It absolutely resisted us. But eventually it had to give in. So you see, remembering what we had for lunch or remembering an event that took place thousands of years ago. This is all part of our collective memory. Judaism has always depended on the power of memory. I would recommend you pick up the, a book by Yehuda Amichai, if you don't already know him. He's an Israeli poet. He passed away, poor fellow. But he is probably the most important Israeli Jewish poet of our generation. Because when he wrote, he writes, excuse me, where can I find the public forgetter? Because if you look at Jewish tradition, we are obsessed with memory. We're remembering the exodus from Egypt. We're remembering the entry into the promised land. We're remembering all the tragedies because when I was in school, they taught us Jews don't have just history. We have oy vey history, oy vey. Here come the crusaders, oy vey. Here comes the Spanish inquisition, oy vey, and so on and so forth but we're still here. And that is the beauty of the whole thing. Tomorrow, when we blow the shofar, when we hear the sound, this is not a silver trumpet. This is not Kenny G, even though he's Jewish. But the point is that it's sort of a strange sound. It's, it's, it's really something you cannot describe, but when you hear it properly should be transported back to those long ago days when we were in the wilderness, listening to this skinny old man who said, I have to give you the latest word from God. It is such a covet. It is such an honor to be Jewish. I absolutely don't think I could be anything else. As we stand on the threshold of a new year, I want to thank you all for coming. I hope to see you here again. You can come also on a plain Shabbat. We have those too. And um, once again, Ruchim Habaim and Lashana Tova. Thank you so much. Also want to thank my colleague, Cantor Javier Smolars and our musical accompanist. Okay, that's Marcello, wait, I had Barsky, Barsky, one of the hard names. Okay, so let's do the Alenu. Please rise. Aleinu le shabiach la dona kol la tet gedula le yotzer bereshit shelo asanu ke goyei aratzot belo samanu emishpechot adama shelo sam kelkeinu kaem vengogor aleinu ke kol amona Shkina 
ידעת היום אשר אותה אל לבדך כי אדוני הוא האלוהים בשמיים ממעל מעל הארץ ועל הארץ מתחת לילוד Page 50 is the Mourner's Kaddish. If you're not saying Kaddish, you may be seated. Yit Gadal v'yit Kaddash Shemei Rabbah. Amen. Yalma divrach hirutei v'yamlich malchutei. V'chayei chon v'yamei chon v'chayei dechol v'yit Yisrael. V'agalau v'zman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehi Shemei Rabbah mevrach v'yolam v'lamei v'maya. יתברך וישתבח ויתפעל ויתרומם ויתנעשה ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל שמי דקודשה בריכו ואלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונקמתה למינן בעלמה ואמרו אמן יהי שם הרבה משמיה מקיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל, ואמרו אמן. אמן. Please be seated. We'll turn now to 52. This is the special psalm for the high holy day season. Could we uh, read, please, the second paragraph, one thing together? One thing I ask of the Lord, for this I yearn, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to pray in his sanctuary, to behold the Lord's beauty. He will hide me in his shrine safe from peril. He will shelter me and put me beyond the reach of disaster. He will raise my head high above my enemies about me. I will bring him offerings with shouts of joy. I will sing, I will chant praise to the Lord. <laughs> Yigdal is on page 54. It's a favorite of mine. Uh, it, is, it was written by, well, the principles of the faith, the 13 principles of the faith were written by Rambam, that is Maimonides back in the 11th century. And then at some point, I think during the um, Renaissance, uh, a fellow named Daniel Ben Yehuda set it to verse. And that's what we have here. נמצא בארץ אל מציאותו אחד ברי יחיד כאיחודו נעלם ברמי סוף לאגדותו אין עוד נבוט ערוף בין הגוף לא נער אוכל אף קדושתו Thank <laughs> you. 
על יד מיון, אמן ביתו, לא יקע נפאר, ולא יאמין דתו לכל העמים, לרשו לתו צופה ויודע, שאת עלינו, מאמין לכל דבר, בקלמתו גומר לאיש חסד כמפעלו, נותן לראש הרע, כרישתו, נשלג לקץ ימים. משיחנו לפדות בך כקץ ישועתו בשנה הבאה נשב על המרפסת ונספור ציפורים נודדות ילדים וחופשה יצא חגו תופסת בין הבית לבין השדות עוד תראה עוד תראה כמה טוב יהיה בשנה בשנה הבאה עוד תראה, עוד תראה כמה טוב יהיה בשנה, בשנה הבאה. איילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאיילאי